and we're live. Chapter 1.3.4. Like any other profession, the profession of warfighting could also be disrupted by software. Computed machines are more than two millennia old. For thousands of years, instructing computers how to operate involved mechanical kinetic activity, i.e. forces displacing masses, even after the invention of fully electric general purpose computers, programmers were still required to spend days pulling levers, turning dials, flipping switches, pressing buttons, and plugging wires to operate them. Eventually, as technology matured, scientists, engineers, and mathematicians came up with a revolutionary concept converting kinetic computer programming operations into digitizable states and storing them in electronic computer memory. By digitally converting kinetic computer operations into electrically acutated states, special purpose computing machines could be repurposed and reprogrammed instantaneously without the lengthy and expensive process of having to redesign, rebuild, remanufacture, or manually reprogram them. Machines that were either physically impossible to build or impractical to operate suddenly became very feasible and modern agrarian society was forever changed. Stored program general purpose computing was such a profound invention that it caused society to split the way it perceives computer programming into two separate concepts. Manufactured elements, i.e. wares, of computing machines that are material and that require forces displaced in masses were conceptualized as hard, i.e. mass-based, wares. The other manufactured elements of computing machines began to conceptualize as soft i.e. massless wares. Since soft computing first emerged, society has raced to convert all sorts of material activities into soft or immaterial activities performed by general purpose stored program computers. The past 80 years have been uniquely characterized by dematerialization of special purpose machines, i.e. printing press, typewriters, phones, calculators, television across every industry as computer scientists and engineers have continued to hone their skills and perfect their craft. Society seems to be constantly reeling from the disruption of soft computer wares, somehow always surprised by what can be converted into the massless, disembodied form of a computer program despite how routine the disruption has become. No profession appears to be uninterruptible by the technology we now call software. With these concepts in mind, the author would like to challenge the reader with the following question. Is it reasonable to expect the profession of warfighting to be any exception? Is it reasonable to expect that the profession of warfighting won't be at least partially dematerialized and disrupted by software now that there is close to a century of examples of this technology dematerializing and disrupting virtually every other profession? Why wouldn't we expect the profession of warfighting to be substantially disrupted by software if so many other activities have already been? What would software look like? Chapter 1.3.5. For the sake of argument, let's assume warfighting will be disrupted by software just as all professions have been disrupted by software. Let's assume software could enable the dematerialization of special purpose war machines, just as they dematerialized countless other special purpose machines over the past several decades. What might that look like? Using Clausewitz's definition of war, consider what it would take to use general purpose computers and software to engineer a massless, immaterial, or disembodied form of the physical power competition which human societies utilize as their other means for settling global policy disputes. In other words, let's consider what kind of technology might cause society to split the way it perceives the profession of warfighting into two separate mental concepts, hard warfighting machines and soft warfighting machines. To engage in a soft form of warfighting, people would need to figure out a way to take the mass out of global scale physical power competitions. 
One way to do this would be to project physical power electronically via charges passed across resistors rather than kinetically via forces displacing masses. But simply being able to wield and project electronic power in, from, and through cyberspace is not enough to satisfy the criteria for war according to Clausewitz's definition because it's missing two other ingredients. Soft, more, soft war machines would need to incorporate a play of chance and probability that rewards creative spirits. Therefore, in addition to invented a mechanism for projecting physical power electronically, there would also need to be some sort of probabilistic protocol for people to complete, compete against each other. There would need to be a clear winner of this competition that doesn't require a court or a judge to declare it. To that end, it seems feasible that people would design a common protocol which establishes internationally agreed upon standards for wielding electronic power and competing against each other in a zero trust and egalitarian manner. The final ingredient for soft war, according to Clausewitz's definition, is for nations to simply start using this electronic power projection technology to settle their policy disputes. Soft war machines would need to serve their nations as a con continuation of policy with other means, just as Clausewitz aptly described war. Nations would need to start using it to physically secure the international policies they value.